Galit Goldfarb. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about why you want to reduce dairy products from your diet in order to help you lose some weight. So first of all, we know that dairy products are rich in calcium and calcium is very important for weight loss. Um, we know that uh, calcium is one of the most abundant minerals in the human body. It helps uh, form and maintain healthy teeth and bones, but it also is found in blood and other tissues where it assists in a number of other functions, including blood clotting, muscle contraction, including heart muscle contraction, vasodilation, hormone secretion, and the transmission of nerve impulses. So calcium is very, very important. But not only is it important for all of those, it also plays a very important role in the modulation of energy metabolism. And it has actually has an anti-obesity effect. Calcium is stored in some fat cells and it plays a crucial role in regulating how the body fat is processed and stored and how it's also removed from the body. The more calcium one has in their fat cells, the more fat the body will burn. So we want to have a high amount of calcium in our diet. But the question is whether should this diet, should this calcium come from dairy products? Well, actually, the calcium from dairy products is not very well absorbed by the human body. Only 25% of the calcium from dairy products is absorbed because it is very low in magnesium and magnesium helps the absorption of calcium into the body. That leaves another 75% to roam about around our body and it is deposited in all sorts of uh, tissues where we don't really want this excessive calcium to be deposited. So the best sources of calcium actually come from plant-based sources. Um, green leafy vegetables are very, very rich in calcium and as well as tofu and soya beans and navy beans, as well as almonds, almond paste and broccoli. So if you want to maintain high levels of calcium in your fat cells, go for these foods. They will really, really help you. Uh, your fat to be burned. It's going to help you burn some fat. The next thing is that dairy products are very rich in protein, but this protein is casein. And in human milk, we have whey protein rather than casein. Now, the biochemical makeup of a cow's milk is ideally suited to trans to transform a 65 pound calf, newly born calf, into a 400 pound cow within one year. It carries three times more protein than human milk. And of all mammals, human milk has the lowest amount of protein, which is 1.2 grams of protein per cup of milk. Human milk also has the lowest uh, ratio between casein and whey protein. So cow's milk on average contains 8.9 grams of protein per cup of milk, which is is a lot more than human milk and this um, shows up in the time required for a baby to double its birth weight which is 120 days whereas a cow doubles its birth weight in 47 days so that's really where you see it because protein also increases the release of IGF-1, uh, insulin-like growth factor 1, which leads cells to reproduce and regenerate, which leads to more growth going on in the body, which also leads to weight gain. Furthermore, dairy products are rich in saturated fat. Even the low-fat options are still rich in saturated fat. Now, saturated fat, it has been shown if consumed after infancy to be a risk factor for heart disease and obesity and many other diseases because the consumption of a diet rich in saturated fat changes the gene expression profile to actually a more obesity linked genetic profile. So we really don't want to be consuming a lot of saturated fats while if we want to lose weight and also if we want to stay healthy. Now, on top of that, dairy products are also have trans fats. Now, trans fats, as we know, are quite unhealthy for us. They actually increase abdominal fat, which is the active fat that leads to inflammation in the body. And it also leads to uh, an increase in uh, a cholesterol profile, which is very unhealthy. It increases LDL uh, levels while reducing the good cholesterol levels, HDL. Um, it changes the cholesterol profile. The Institute of Medicine actually recommends, and I quote, I think I quote, actually, <laughs> it's that they say that individuals should keep their trans fatty acid consumption to as low as possible. So if you want to reduce your trans fatty acid consumption to as low as possible, the only way to do this is to actually reduce 
any animal products, including dairy products, from your diet. Now, dairy products also influence the iron status. And iron status is significantly impaired when cow's milk is introduced to diets of infants um, at a very early age because of the casein molecule, which is much bigger than the whey protein molecule. And it actually causes internal bleeding in some children. And this leads to anemia because of the blood loss. But apart from causing, causing um, anemia, studies show that iron deficiency leads to also an elevated steady state of blood glucose levels and also elevated insulin levels. Now when your blood sugar levels are consistently high, you will increase your risk for insulin resistance, which is a risk factor for diabetes, heart disease, and ensures weight gain. But how does iron deficiency, how is it connected to weight gain, you may be asking? Well, chronic inflammation is the word because chronic inflammation leads to weight gain. It leads to uh, visceral fat, which, re which releases inflammatory cytokines. And these inflammatory cytokines stimulate the production of hepcidin. And hepcidin is the primary iron regulator in our body. It actually blocks the um, reuse of iron from degraded uh, red blood blood cells and it also blocks the absorption of iron through the gut from the diet. Actually vegetarians who consume large amounts of dairy products have been found to be especially prone to iron deficiency anemia which leads to chronic inflammation in their body. Now furthermore uh, dairy products are also very high in synthetic chemicals including xenoestrogens. These come from the udders, the plastic udders that collect the milk from the, the cows uh, during collection. Now not only that, the the baby calves are actually taken away from their mother cow and they are fed from um, a, a mother that gives them the, the milk in plastic um, containers that are left in the sun uh, uh, throughout the day. And this is how these calves are very much exposed to these xenoestrogens and they um, then we consume the milk and we get these xenoestrogens from them. These chemicals have been shown to lead to weight gain in over 20,000 animal species. Nowadays, cows are raised in very unnatural environment from them and for uh, farmers to increase the levels of cow milk, then they also provide them with growth hom hormones. And these growth hormones increase the uh, release of insulin-like growth factor that I spoke about earlier, which actually leads to weight gain, as well as uh, cancer and um, a decreased lifespan as well. Now, uh, foods are, uh, dairy products are also rich in, in estrogens because modern day cows are genetically changed so that they will lactate throughout the whole pregnancy period. And this is precisely the time when estrogen is at very, very high levels. Now this e estrogen passes into their milk and then into our body when we consume the, these dairy products. And the estrogen, this is a steroid hormone which forms insulin resistance and as well as obesity and uh, is linked with type two diabetes. Now these hormones lead to an increase in visceral fat, which as I said, causes inflammation. This increased inflammation leads to leptin resistance, which makes us feel hungry all the time and it increases appetite. Now, why is it so difficult to stop dairy products? The problem with dairy milk is that it is rich in casein, as we said before. Now this casein, once it's digested, the byproducts of this digestion are casomorphines, and these come from the opioid family, which make us feel high. And this is very, very addictive. And that's very, actually very good for the mother because um, she's causing her baby the baby calf to be addicted to her milk and it keeps coming back for more food but it also causes an addiction to anyone else who consumes and digests these um, uh, dairy products so that's why it's very very difficult but once you understand this whole process then you understand why you really want to stop uh, the consumption of dairy products and you know that it's going to be hard so you look towards this, you understand it, and it helps you overcome this difficulty. Now, of course, once you stop for a while, then of course the addiction stops. It's not easy at first, but it, it does stop it eventually. So there you have it for today. I hope this has helped and I hope you like my content. And if you do, please subscribe to my channel and a thumbs up, give a thumbs up to this video if you liked it. If you want and are interested in more um, uh, articles about health and healthy eating and a healthy diet, please visit my blog on www.thegorilladiet.com. Thank you very much. <laughs>